Hello there all my lovely jewelry makers, I'm Christina at CSL Designs and in today's tutorial I'm going to show you how you can capture a cabochon using Kumihimo. Now if you like the two necklaces that I made for this tutorial here, they'll both be available for sale in my shop along with kits and other tutorials as well, so I'm going to leave a link to that description box down below. Otherwise, if you want to learn how you can make one for yourself, then keep watching. So these are the materials that we're going to need. First of all, we of course need our Kumihima disc and I'm using the round one in this case. Then we need two different kinds of cord. Now the first one here is a one millimeter satin cord and I'm just using a purple color. Then I'm also using an Eslon cord, again just a purple color, but you can of course mix and match your colors however you want to. Then we of course need the cabochon that we want to capture. So the one that I'm using here is a three by four centimeter teardrop shaped gemstone cabochon and the specific one is a purple agate, but you can use different sizes and shapes for this. You might just have to modify the braid. To help us capture the cabochon, we also need some beads. So I've got some super duos here, and these will be incorporated into the braid while we're braiding. And then I've got some 11 Omiyuki seed beads. The specific ones I'm using are galvanized blush, and these are going to be used to help capture the cabochon after we made the braid. To help us do that, we also need some Eslon thread and a beading needle. And finally, we just need our findings. So I'm using a lot of claw cast mixed extender chain and of course some jump rings to put it together. And I'm gonna attach these to these Kumihima ends that we're gonna add onto the braid using this E6000 glue so it'll be nice and secure. Now I am gonna leave the material list and useful links in the description box down below. And just to let you know, I do sell Kumihima starter kits in my shop, which are especially useful if you're a beginner. So you'll find a link to that in the description box down below. Otherwise, let's get all the materials ready and let's get started. Then the lengths of cord we'll need is eight lengths of about one and a half meters each and I have four of each cord so four of the satin cord there and four of the Eslon cord and what I've then done is put them all together at the end and then just tied a knot to hold them together. I then grab my Kumihima disc here and we then want to attach our cords to this disc first of all so we can start braiding. So I take the knot and put it down through the hole in the center and I just grab onto it with my fingers on the back there. Then we need to distribute the cords into the slots on the outside. So I'm going to be using the top slot here, number one, put a satin cord into that and then I'm taking a satin cord into the opposite cord so we have them right opposite each other there. And then another satin cord all the way out straight to the left and the remaining one opposite that one. So basically they are perfectly quartered all the way around the disc so we have the other cords left so just take one at a time and put them right in between evenly between the satin cords there and spread them out so they're all opposite each other but in between the satin cords so we end up with something that looks a bit like that now to start the braid what I'm gonna do is keep holding onto the braid here at the back and then I'm gonna take the top cord so this is the satin cord I'm starting with bring it down and straight down to the opposite cord I'm gonna release that and then place the satin cord from the top into the slot that we just freed up and then the cord from the bottom I'm going to put up into the empty slot at the top where we took the other one from and we still have the cords in the original position you can say but these two cords are just swapped places basically and then I'm going to turn the disc to my next satin cord and I'm turning it clockwise and then I'm going to do the same thing so grab the top one of the satin cords bring it down before placing it into the slot just release the other one so we can put this one into that slot and then bring the bottom one up to the top and into the slot that we emptied on the top there. Now turn the disc in the same direction again but only till you run into the Eslon cord so the very next one there. Same principle though, release the top one, bring it down, release that bottom one to fit in the top one into that slot and then take the bottom one and bring it up into the empty slot on the top. So we're always working with opposite cords. Now we have one pair left that we haven't used yet. I'm going to keep turning the disc in the same direction and then repeat. The top one comes down, release the bottom one first, place the top one into that slot and then bring that bottom one all the way to the top and put it into the empty slot on the top. And you can see we continue to have the cords in the same positions. Now I'm just gonna keep turning the disc in the same way all the way until I get back to number one there. So this is always gonna be a starting point. This was basically one full round. Now all we're gonna do is keep repeating this. So again, take the top one from slot number one, bring it down, release that bottom one that's right opposite it, place the top one into it, and then the bottom one up into the top slot there. Turn the disc a quarter to the next satin cord pair. Repeat the same thing. And you quite quickly will find a routine with this. So you can kind of start to almost go on autopilot. Obviously just making sure that we do continue this same pattern. Take the next S long cords there that you run into and the last pair. 
move them as well in the same way. And now just turn the disc all the way until we get back to number one. And this was now round two. So basically you just wanna keep doing this until we have the length that we need. So now I've braided a length here and you can see it's coming out on the back. And how long this is gonna be is up to you. So this is gonna be one half of the length of the whole necklace. So now we've got to the point where that's gonna be the midpoint and the part that's gonna actually capture the cabochon. So that means we need to add in our super duos into the braid as we're braiding it. And to do that, first of all, we're just gonna continue with the braid. So again, I'm just starting with number one, bringing that down, just the exact same technique. Move to the next one. So the setting cards first. And now I'm moving to that first S long card that I've got. And then here is where I'm gonna add in my beads. So I'm just gonna release that top one. And before I move it down, I'm just gonna get to the very end, grab a bead and then feed the card through one of the holes in the super duo. Let it drop all the way down. And then make sure you push it down so it's sitting on this side where the card is coming from and down below the other cards. And then before moving the card down, I'd like to just put my thumb on top of the bead so it stays in place. Bring the card down same principle release the other one place this one into that slot and now just going to get to the end of this card here so again i'm adding the beads onto the cards that are opposite each other just put the cord through one of the holes in this one let it drop all the way down to the bottom and same thing make sure to push it down there in the middle and then put your thumb over it to keep it in place when you bring the card up and into the top slot there then i'm just going to turn the disc for the next pair and here i'm just going to use the cords without any beads and then that's gonna help lock them into place. So we've now added two super duos there and they're sitting right opposite each other on either side of the braid. And then just turn your disc and then continue the next round. Now what I'm gonna do is now do a round without adding beads in. So just do that in the same way. And when we get to the S long card there, I'm just gonna move them without adding beads in, finish up this round, move all the way back to the top, to the number one there. And then I'm just gonna start a new round. So again, take the top card, bring it down, start with the setting cards, grab the next pair, move your cards. And now I have reached the first S long card pair. And in this round is then where I wanna add in beads again. So again, get to the very end of the card, feed it through one of the holes in the bead, bring it all the way down, and then make sure it drops into the middle there. And then make sure to put your thumb on top of the bead there, bring the card down, swap them out, and then add your bead to this length as well. Let it drop into the hole in the center, put your thumb over them and bring the card up. Turn your disc and just kind of lock the beads in place here with the last pair of S long cards. And then you can just turn your disc. So this is then how I'm gonna add in the beads. Only do it every other round so we create a little bit of spacing between them. So I now continued adding in my beads and I just wanna show you how you can kind of figure out how many you need to add. So as you're going, when you've got a decent length of beads, you can take your cabochon. Obviously it might be different as well depending what size and shape of cabochon you're using. So you have a length and then you just literally wanna place it around your cabochon and then bring it all the way around and then see obviously where they meet up at the top of the cabochon. And then you can see if you have enough. Obviously if you don't, you can always add in more or if you have too many, then you can always undo some. But once you figure that out and you have all the beads that you need, you literally just wanna continue with the braid now without adding any more beads in. So I'm just gonna start the next round, same way. Start with that number one slot where the setting card is and then just continue. And now what we want to do is make the same length without beads here that we did in the beginning. Just roughly, doesn't have to be perfect. So obviously as you're going, once you've got a decent length, you can always use the other end here to measure against. So now finish the full length of braid, we can take it off the disc. So I'm just gonna grab hold of the braid underneath the disc there, right where the braid ends, and literally just remove the cords, and then we can take the disc away. And then I just wanna keep hold of that while I tie just a regular overhand knot. So the end of the braid hit does not come undone. So just tighten that right up to the end of the braid. And then once I've done that, what I just like to do is kind of just go through the braid and just stretch it out a little bit. Don't pull hard, but just gently kind of stretch it. It just settles the braid in place a bit. And then we have the braid ready with the beads across the middle of the braid and then two longer ends, one on each end of the braid that we're gonna use for the necklace part. Now this part here is of course what's gonna be capturing the cabochon, which is what we're gonna need to do now. So this is where we wanna bring in our needle and thread. And then we just wanna get off the length of the thread here it's really whatever you're comfortable working with. Cut that off. And then of course just add your needle to the very end of the thread. 
like that and then just bring it down so we have kind of a double thread for a bit and we can always pull the thread through if we need more length makes it a little bit shorter to work with as well and then on the long end here on the very other end of the thread i'm just going to be tying a knot so i'm just going through a couple of times making it a surgeon's knot just so we have that as a stopper so the thread doesn't just pull straight through the braid so i'm just going to bring my braid in and then i'm going to bring the two ends of the beaded section there together so you can see we're going to end up with this teardrop shape in this case because that's what fits the cabochon and then the braid it's is actually also going to get attached up here so I'm just going to start attaching my thread on one end of the bead section it doesn't really matter what end you start with but then I'm just going to attach it by going through the braid basically from one side to the other like that and pull it all the way through until that knot that we made so it stops there and then I just want to go back and forth through the braid here a couple of times until you feel like it's nice and secure and we can then just go in and cut off that little tail from the knot just so it's not sticking out so there we go it's now attached and I now want to make my way towards the beads so we're going to use the super doors there one side at a time so one side is going to be for the front and one side is going to be for the back and just make your way towards one of them and I'm then going to come out right next to the bead but on the inside you could say of the bead so not on the outside where the beads end but I just want to come out next to it in between those first two beads because then I'm going to bring my thread through the hole in the bead that's already been used to incorporate it into the braid like that pull it all the way through and then bring my needle and thread through the other hole that's facing away from the bead that hasn't been used yet and come in the opposite direction so we end up with the thread basically laying along the side of the bead like that because now we have our thread in position to start adding our seed beads in between these super doors here so we can tighten this up around the cabochon so that is the next step so I'm just going to get a few beads ready here and then I literally just want to start picking up beads and connecting between the outer holes here of the super duos that I haven't used yet. Now obviously we need to kind of add the right amount of beads and this will be different depending on the size and shape of cabochon you're using and it's really a matter of just figuring it out as you go. So what I like to do is place my cabochon down and then bring the braid around the cabochon how it's going to sit and then just slightly push over the super duos here just to get an idea of how the super duos are going to sit in relation to each other and that's going to give us an idea of how much space we need between them so in other words how many beads we need to add so I'm just going to start adding the beads here and then I'm going to go through afterwards and tell you how many beads I've added where of course like I said it will be different depending what materials you're using but I grab the beads and then go through the outer hole in the next super duo pull the thread all the way through and then grab the next set of beads and go through the next super duo and just keep going like that all the way around so I'm now all the way around to the other end and then what beads I added in is the first gap I added added two, then I added three, I added three, 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 and then in the middle one on the bottom there, which is always going to be the bottom of the cabochon, I added two, and then three, 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 and two on the last one. So it's a mirrored image. So you have a midpoint there, and then I have a mirrored image on both sides. But like I said, it's just to give you an idea of the concept, because different materials will give you different results. So as I pull this tight, you can obviously see it's going to pull this close together, and then naturally create that teardrop shape because of how we added the beads in. Then what I just want to do is go from this last super duo back to the first one and go through the same outer hole there so come all the way through with your thread because then that fully connects all the beads there and we create like a top point and you can see we have that natural teardrop shape but then I'm going to grab my needle again and basically now what I want to do is go back through this whole path where I add the beads in again so I'm just going to go through making sure I catch every bead and then through the super duos because I just want to create a bit more strength in this section here so just follow that path and go all the way back through all of them and once you get back to the beginning there make sure to go through both super doors like I did the first time just so we get that connection point as well and then keep hold of the beads a bit and then pull the thread tighter so we make sure we close up any gaps all the way around so we don't have any place where we can kind of see the thread peeking through we want to make sure all the beads are nice and tight and then we basically need to fasten this in place now so I'm coming out of that very first super door you could say that we started with in the outer hole so I now want to go down the side of the bead and 
and come through the other hole so we can make our way back down to the braid and with every step I just make sure to still pull the thread tight so it's not loosening up along the way and then from there we can go straight through the braid so same principle I'm going to go through the braid from one side to the other and just pull the thread all the way through and then I just go back and forth through a few times here just to kind of lock these beads in place because that will help hold the tension and once you've done that we then want to make our way to the first super duel on the opposite side of the ones we already did so I'm just going to get the needle again to the side of the super duel that's between the first two pull the thread all the way through and then we just want to go through the inner hole first to then come back up the side of the bead and then in the opposite direction through the other hole and then we have a thread in place to start adding the beads in between these super doors here. So I like to put my braid down on a flat surface and then put the cabochon in place, so the back of it against the beads we've already added. And then this round here is probably gonna be a bit different than the first one. So like I said, this one I like to make nice and tight that's on the back. And this one here, the super doors are gonna go in over the edge of the cabochon of the front. So we might need to add a different amount of beads. So otherwise, same principle. I'm gonna bring in some beads here. And then I just wanna start going from one super doo to the other while adding in beads in between to connect them. So again I'm just going to add my beads to my needle, go through the next super duo and then we have the beads sitting right there in between and then just continue like this all the way to the other end. Same principle, I'm going to then add my beads and go through the first super duo again in that outer hole so we can have that connection point. So just for reference I'm just going to tell you the beads that I've added. So the very first gap there I added three and then I've added four in every single gap all the way around until the last gap where I added three as well just like the first one and at the very top I've just added four as well so again that's just for reference but then we need to go back through all these beads again with our needles and making sure we don't miss any of the beads so I've also gone through that very first super duo again and then I just want to grab my cabochon put that into place because obviously before we pull any of this tight and finish it off we need to make sure the cabochon is in there and then you can just pull the thread gently but nice and tight so these beads basically come up and over the sides a little bit and just capture it nicely in place and then we want to finish this off so I'm just taking my needle and going through that same super duo but in the bottom hole and the opposite direction because we're now making our way back to the braid and again every step of the way I just want to make sure to keep that thread pulled nice and tight so we don't get gaps opening up there but then we just want to go back down into the braid the same principle go through from one side to the other and do that a few times and then the last thing I just want to do is connect the two braids because they're still separate from each other here so right above where the cabochon is I just want to go through from one side to the other side like that and then again just go back and forth a few times to make this nice and secure and now to finish off the thread what I'm just going to do is go through the braids again but instead of pulling it all the way through just leave a little loop here then come back to that side pull the needle all the way through and then before pulling the thread tight I just want to take my needle and go through this loop a couple of times and then we can let go and pull it so it tightens the loop but at the same time we then create a knot. Now I just want to do this a couple of times and once you've done your final knot make sure to go through it a couple of times again just so we don't cut off the thread right where the knot is because it will probably come undone but then we can just go in and cut off the excess thread and then we have the cabochon fully captured on both the front and the back. Then all that's left to do is deal with the ends of the actual braid. So I'm just gonna cut off the excess obviously and finish them off so we can attach our findings. So first of all, we just wanna find out how long we want this. So I'm just gonna measure from where the cabochon sits and then you can just decide how long you want it and obviously that'll count for both sides. What I'm then gonna do is add some glue to a toothpick and then I'm just gonna add the glue all the way around the braids where I want to cut them off and then do the same thing at the same point on the other one and then we can just leave that to dry then I'm going to cut off the excess here and I'm going to cut through the glue so there's glue on both sides just so the braid doesn't come undone so just cut straight through it there and then I'm just going to use that to also cut the other length then we need to add the kumihimo ends here so I'm going to grab one and first of all I just want to add a bit of glue inside of it you don't need to fill it up because the braid is going to go in there so it's just going to make the glue come spilling out but just enough to cover the inside walls and then we just need to attach this to the end of the braid so basically just put the braid in there and make sure to push it as far in as it'll go and then we just need to leave that to dry and of course repeat the same thing with the other end and once the glue is dry you can attach your findings to the kumhi lens there and your necklace is finished and ready to wear. So I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Now, if you like Kumihimo, I have loads more tutorials on my channel, so feel free to check them out. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching this one and I'll see you in the next one.